Hello everyone, I, Dr. Mike here. This video today is going to explain this machine right behind me. What do we call it, why do we use it, and how it helps us get a glasses prescription. As always everybody, before we get into the video, if you like eye-related topics, explanation videos, or are just interested in the eyeballs whatsoever, subscribe. Alrighty, so first off, this machine right here is called the Ferropter. Now, when we first put a patient behind the Ferropter, what we have to adjust is the distance between their pupils. And that's used with this little knob right up here. Now, the second step after you've adjusted the pupillary distance is making sure that the machine is in line. So, you use this knob right here, and you use this indicator to let you know when it's perfectly centered and straight. So keep in mind everybody, once we're set up at this point, we can start what we call retinoscopy. That will be in a separate video that I will explain. With that said, some offices also use what we call an autorefractor, which gives you similar values to retinoscopy, or essentially a starting point for the prescription that you can preset into the ferropter uh, ahead of starting anything with the patients. So now that we have the patient aligned, the machine aligned, and a preset prescription put into the uh, machine, either based off the autorefraction, retinoscopy, or previous glasses that the patient has used, what I normally do is start with one eye at a time. So we occlude the left eye. After we occlude the left eye, what I normally do on the screen is have the 2040, 2030, and 2025 line shown. Now keep in mind, this is just a basic for understanding of how to refract or use this machine right here. With that said, at the end of the day, every case is different. You may be doing refraction with both eyes open. Uh, you may be blurring the patient. There's many, many different factors that come into play. This is just uh, for a basic understanding. So once the left eye is closed and we're starting to do work on the right eye, what I normally do is I put about 0.75 or one diopter of blur uh, in front of the patient's prescription. Okay, so we add that in. Then on the chart, we'll show the 2040 line, 2030 line, and 2025 line. Normally, the patient will have a little bit of blurriness at this point because we've given them about a plus one extra over top their prescription. What this does, though, is allow us not to over minus the prescription. So what I'll do at this point is begin to introduce a little bit of minus diopters into the prescription. And I let the patient tell me when they're able to read the chart clearly specifically that 2030 line. Once they reach that, we now begin to, to ask which one is better, glasses number one or glasses number two or option one or two. And we also have to pay quite close attention to is there improvement to the vision of the patient? Because some patients will gladly accept more minus, yet it doesn't improve their vision. So it's kind of a close teeter-totter between while we increase the minus of the prescription, is their vision getting significantly better or are they noticing it get significantly better? Once they reach that option between one or two being quite the same, then we know we've reached our middle point or our neutral point where we've any more we're gonna to begin to include too much minus or over minus the patient. Now it's time to check for astigmatism. That's this portion right here. We call this the JCC or Jackson Cross Cylinder. The way we use this is initially you align these wheels to the axis of the prescription or the little arrows that your ferropter will have. This allows you to refine the axis of the patient's astigmatism. And the way we do this, you ask the option one or is the option two better with the patient mainly focusing on the 2030 line or the line with more O's and C's that they're able to tell the difference based on the axis. Now that we've introduced the Jackson cross cylinder or uh, the JCC, we ask the patient which is better, one or two. Based on their answer, you follow where the red mark is and you move towards the red mark or you move the axis, which is this right here, towards the red mark. Let's say they say option two is better here. You will move it towards that red. And you're gonna continuously refine until the patient notices no real difference between option one and option two. Now we switch over to the power assessment of the astigmatism. That's where this P is right there. And that will be in line with your axis. And you ask the patient again, option one or option two. If they pick option two, which will align with the white, you decrease the prescription or decrease the amount of astigmatism. If they pick option two, which would have a red, you increase it. 
up until the point where they don't really tell a difference. Now, once you're done using this machine, refining the astigmatism, you check the vision at the end. That is the most important part. If the patient is seeing 2020, you know you've done a pretty good job at using the Feropter and refining the prescription. But one thing you can also do just to make sure and add a little bit of icing on the cake for the patients is have them try it in a trial frame in the front of your office. This is especially important if you don't have old glasses or numbers are not making quite as much sense to you. You're able to refine that prescription based on how they feel actually trying the prescription out on in the front of your clinic, walking around with it, looking far away, reading up close. You're able to actually get a good gauge on how they feel with the prescription. Now, please keep in mind, this is just a basics for understanding how we use the Feropter and what we're doing behind the scenes. This is more of an art and it takes a long time to understand how to refine a prescription, how to pick what people or patients will be more comfortable with, and it's a full scope thing. You're not just looking at what the machine generates, you're looking at what the autorefractor or the retinoscopy numbers were, you're looking at what their old glasses were, whether they have high astigmatism, low astigmatism, high nearsightedness, low nearsightedness. So, it's pretty much a basic art to have to get used to. This is just the basics of understanding what we're using the machine for. Again, thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please hit that subscribe button, like the video and comment. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, you only have two eyes. Take care of them.